looks like we are live. (laughs) Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It is so good to be here with you. Today is really uh, precious for me because I have my friend, I like to call her my friend, my colleague, Chris Gota with us. And Chris Gota is uh, the CEO of uh, Hawaii Cancer Care. And today we're going to be talking about cancer. It is Mental Health Week. It is the month for cancer. So I thought, why not for us to talk about this exact thing that how cancer affects us and what is going on in our life and it's going to be what? Conversational, right? Hi, Chris. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I am doing good. How are you, my dearest? Lovely. I'm a little bit chilly. It seems like fall has hit and we've had some breezes and cold weather. I kind of like it, but I'm cold. <laughs> well, maybe you have a heater at home. I have not started the heater, but that's one of the things that... You know, it's autumn and yes. it's okay. Oh, start out with the scarf. Yeah, we'll start out with the scarf. And if I need the heater, I'll turn on turn it on. But <laughs> so far this is good. Good enough for now. <laughs> right. And um uh, that that's you just prompted something and I'm I was thinking and it's like being cozy, being comfortable, feeling safe, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So today's topic is exactly that. How do we create this, uh, a, like a cocoon of safety, of a bubble of comfort zone yep. when we are going through cancer? Yep. And knowing that you specialize in cancer care, why not we start with you, the effects of that, and then I'll chime in. Sure. So in our practice in Hawaii, uh, you know, obviously we see a lot of cancer patients every day, but you you don't really, um, cancer touches so many people. And what we don't realize are the actual numbers of this. And and October being Cancer Awareness Month, the month of October is uh, the American Cancer Society has chosen breast cancer and liver cancer as the Mm -hmm. awareness uh, the, the types of cancers that we want to bring attention to during this month. And, you know, I think it's, it's timely. October is that, that time where, um, you know, and, and breast cancer awareness is probably one of the more popular or well-known awarenesses when it comes to cancer. We have everything, you know, um, we pink everything to bring awareness. But what really does that mean? And it really means just being aware of your risk factors for cancer, because unlike cancer in the past, it's not necessarily a death sentence. You know, I'm finding this out with our practice is that um, it's still very scary. I'm not going to, uh, you know, sugarcoat things, but it is still very scary to get a cancer diagnosis. Not, It's not necessarily a death sentence. Mm. In the past, years we've had a lot of medical innovation so a lot of treatments have um, been developed that actually you know um, address cancer so you don't die from these cancers but one of the biggest tools we have to battle death against cancer is early screening and that's mm-hmm. where these awareness awareness months and awareness campaigns come from is not only be aware that you know cancer is still prevalent out there but what are your risk factors and we're always going we're always you know talking about what are risk factors what makes us more susceptible to cancer and you know all of that information can be found online but i i i printed it out and and it's from the American Cancer Society and you can log in and see all of that information on cancer.org and I think um, Lisa I sent you a bunch of links that you can you can add to this uh, uh, link later on so people can right. look up everything that I've seen but I printed it out so basically be aware this month that if you are if you have any of these you are um, you have a risk factor for cancer so and these are smokers obviously and then people who regularly drink alcohol, and we can kind of go over what that means. What does a regular drinker mean? If you are 10 to 15 pounds or more overweight, 
if you have a history of cancer in your immediate family, immediate okay. family meaning your, your parents, your brother, sister, your, so your siblings or your children. So that's an immediate family member. Anyone of Ashkenazi Jewish heritage and anyone exposed to the human pamplomavirus, the HPV virus, and those who have um, a known exposure to uh, environmental hazards such as radiation or, or toxic chemicals. So that puts you at a higher risk of cancer. And that just simply means that when you go to your doctor's appointment, your regular doctor's appointment, let them know about, you know, the, hey, you know, I, I'm a smoker or I drink this. But what should I be getting screened for? And your primary care physician, your general physician will let you know, oh, this is, you're at this age, you're this, uh, you, you've got all these other health factors. This is what you should get screened for. And they will give you all of those things. So basically for breast cancer, it's mammograms and breast self-examination. So you can, you can do examination on yourself. And if there's anything uh, unusual, any lumps or rashes, you bring that attention to, you know, you let your doctor know that, you, you know, you have something going on. And uh, so again, symptoms, my father had lung cancer and he'd exhibited no symptoms until the very end. And he was, he died two weeks shy of his 89th birthday. Wow. So, yeah. Um, and the lung cancer, uh, you know, it, it, it had, he got it and then it spread quickly, but he had, he exhibited really no symptoms until six months before he died. So screening is very important because you may not have symptoms or, you know, as we know, a lot of women will walk around com like, you know, completely functional with all these symptoms. We may not think, oh, I'm just not feeling 100% or this has been bothering me, but we're not thinking that that could be a symptom of a more serious illness. Okay. So. so here's the thing. Uh, from all the um, research and everything, we all have cancer cells in us. Yeah. Correct? Okay. So some, some are they develop, they grow, and others remain dormant, and there are a lot of people who don't even get cancer. Correct? Correct. Or, right. Now, the symptoms that you talked about, all is great, and I want to bring something in light because I woke up this morning knowing the topic we were going to discuss. What about those children? who have cancer, who've never smoked, who've never drank, who've never done that. So is that a, a lineage? Is that heredity? Is that a cell that it's already inside the body? They are born with that? What do we... It depends. You know, cancer is, you know, now that we, we have had a lot of research into cancer, we now know that cancer is a process. So it is. it starts out like a normal process in the body and then something goes awry. Something changes in the DNA of the cell and then the cell becomes a cancer or becomes cancerous. So it's a process and all of the things that attribute, contribute to those changes can be varied across so many different people, depending on their environment, depending on what they're born with. So sometimes uh, cancers in children can be uh, 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 something that's been in them that they're born with. Other times it could be environmental. It really just varies. Mm -hmm. uh, statistically though, uh, people with these, you know, risk factors and, uh, you know, I, uh, I was going to get to the end, the number one biggest risk factor that kind of covers it all is chronic stress. So chronic stress, and, and the reason for that obviously is that chronic stress releases cortical hormones in your body that then affect these processes, these normal processes that go in your body. So, you know, these elevated stress hormones that are constantly, you have, you're, you're in a constant state of stress, you're not able to relieve your stress, this, this it piles up. So the process becomes more and more, you know, um, uh, heavy, it becomes more and more difficult for your body to kind of, you know, snap back to normal for your immune system to catch up to all these different processes. So once it's kind of like a domino effect, you know, you're, you're stacking your, these, these health things against yourself. Um, and it kind of gives cancer, the cancer process, a chance to take hold if you are not addressing them. So exactly, uh, because one in three people with cancer experience this mental health and depression. It's all this emotional, emotional distress. And yes. it's mostly common in, with uh, 
women with the breast cancer, that 40%, and that they also have that head and neck cancer. So it truly is attributed to this part where in the alternative augmentative um, healing, we call our breasts the nurturer. Yeah. the one that gives the milk, the nurturing and the hugs and everything. So, you know, I've even heard that the less you give to yourself, the more you give to people, uh, be aware of, you know, the breast cancer. And there, there's people, you know, they can be selfless and they, they get it. So mm -hmm. there is also up to 25% of cancer survivors that, that, truly experience depression and because of cancer. So it is like a dichotomy. If I am distressed, if I feel rejected, it's one of the deep rooted things within our subconscious. If I feel I am not worthy, I feel rejected and not wordiness, not rejection creates this negativity that starts eating at us. And that in itself creates a depression. So does the egg yeah. come first or the chicken? Yeah, I get, that's a great question. And that is exactly what happens. It's this cycle that, it, you know, results in chronic stress. So this, the, the depression, this, the feelings of not being worthy, the anxiety that comes with all that, it does contribute to this chronic stress state that your, your body's in that makes you more susceptible to cancer. And then, you know, if you do get a cancer diagnosis, the statistic is that a third of all cancer patients experience, you know, moderate to severe uh, mental health issues. And it's not just the patients, it's also caregivers. So, you know, and then of course, because cancer is prevalent, you could be in a situation where, you know, you, like, you, like you said, you know, something starts and then the cycle keeps going. You're stressed because somebody in your family got cancer or you got cancer. And, and uh, you know, especially for women, when you get this diagnosis and you start your treatment, you might be you, you, in the position in the family where you are taking care of everything. You're taking care of you know, the bills, you're taking care of the, the cleaning, you're taking care of the, the children, you're taking care, you're, you're the one kind of in charge of getting all this operation going smoothly in your life. Then you get this cancer diagnosis and, and you're thinking, okay, th what's my role now? How do I get all this still in place? How do I keep all these things aligned and still take care of myself? And, you know, that's a very, very difficult thing to do. And the one thing that is probably the most difficult thing, and I, I have to attest that, that it was something I had to personally get over when my father was going through cancer, is to ask for help, right? Huh. Ask for help and accept help. So, uh, you know, there, uh, and if you don't have a, a support system around you, um, you can get help. You can ask your doctor to put you in the, in the trajectory where you can get support and help because that is really... Uh, in, in, in addition to getting the medical treatment for your cancer, the self-care and the acceptance of, of mental health, behavioral health support is very key. It's very important. And I'm so thankful. One of the nice things that came out of the pandemic was this kind of the removal of the stigma for uh, uh, around seeking mental health mm. uh, support. You know, yep. now it's very common and people are much more accepting of it that I need to talk to somebody and actually doing that and talking to somebody. So that is extremely helpful. You know, that said, I want to let our audience know that if you text cancer to 818-221-2797, you will receive an audio recording uh, as my gift to you, if you or someone that you know is going through cancer and it's called the healing cocoon, uh, that you listen and you go into a deep state of relaxation, coping with cancer and allowing you to emotionally and mentally be more at a relaxed state. So again, that's text cancer to 818-221-2797. And if you do go to healwithin.com in my store and scroll down, you will see a bundle 
for the cancer care that it's audio recording and our DVD for the caregivers and that also helps the caregivers so well, great segue thank you for you, you didn't even know you prompted it as I was going to talk and, about. and I, I totally endorse and encourage that because there is a lot more research now going on um, American Cancer Society has a, an active research uh, clinical trial going on right now for for cancer patients that, that that take advantage of mental health support and what the effects it has on their physical health and we're finding the data is finding that it is extremely good for cancer patients to have this extra support, mental health support, because it does help them to heal. It helps them to tolerate cancer treatment, chemotherapy better. And, you know, it, and, and basically well, it, it, it increases their chances of getting healed. Exactly. One of the things, not only got guided visualization, the hypnosis, uh, the audio recording that I have, it also helps uh, with um, the nausea in yep, order for absolutely. the body to calm so they are not going through so much of a nausea and also the emotional impact and everything. You brought up something interesting when you were talking about feeling overwhelmed. When we feel overwhelmed, there's the children, there's the husband, there's the home, there's the work, there's the parents, you know, it's like being pulled from all directions, especially mm -hmm. women that become the caregivers, majority of women, not all women, and they become the caregivers and managing everything. It's like when this news comes, either they are or someone they love it's like you know of all the things this is all i needed but i think this there is a silver lining to everything and by all means i am open to hear your side of it that sometimes it's such a drastic thing that happens into our life and i'm not saying it's good but the good part of it is you stop and start taking care of you. You stop and start asking for help. You stop and say, you know what? What about me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And, and I think that when people have a, a much more somatic relationship with their body, where they're paying attention mm -hmm. to their body, you know, all of these things come into play. You do become healthier because you start to listen to why am I experiencing that pain? Why am I experiencing that anxiety? And in the past, it was kind of more heroic to just push right through it and keep working and keep going. And then now we're finding that when you ignore your body's signals, you know, that can result in much greater illness later on down the line. So it is very important. You're right that uh, uh, unfortunately, sometimes it does take illness to kind of stop us in our tracks and start we start to pay attention to ourselves or we start to pay attention to the things that you know start to reprioritize you know our our days and our our goals and you know it, and it's still important to have goals to to you know to heal to get better to you know tolerate the medication do whatever you need to do to set those goals to you know to beat the cancer it's very important to do that but it's also important to remember let go of these expectations because it is going to be a big change in your life you know uh obviously you know taking time off work to get treatment that's going to be a big change in and of itself and to just kind of um be kind to yourself and and let yourself know that you know these changes are significant and some things will get missed but that's okay in the end they'll balance out especially you know because you are going to get better and you're going to you know beat this and and uh you know kind of take stock and and reprioritize and maybe not put yourself out there so much so that you are so susceptible to illness because of the constant chronic stress you put yourself under so exactly. addressing that. um I don't, uh, I can't see any of our audience. If there is anyone who would like to ask a question, uh, if you do, please share, put a comment in there. Uh, we are here. Here's another question. Uh, what is, what is the first thing we need to do? 
if we feel a lump, if we feel, uh, how do we know when to go for a checkup? It's like women are supposed to go for a mammogram once a year, you know, and then they say after you are like 70, you no longer need to do, do a mammogram. At what point, at what point do we know? Because children get it, 19 year old, I know someone at age 19, she had breast yeah. cancer, yeah. breast cancer. So, yeah. Help me. So, yeah, the, and, and it's, it is difficult to say, okay, you know, you're in this circumstance, you got to go see this type of doctor, that type of doctor. Right. I would say in general, see your doctor regularly, minimum once a year. You know, if you are not feeling a hundred percent, or if you're, even if you are, you know, a lot of, like my dad, he would never complain about pain, never had any kind of indication that he was in any kind of pain or distress. So of course, you know, you think he's fine and you may be that type of person where I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just a little thing here and there. So it, it, but if you're, you're very busy or you're, you're under a lot of stress or you maybe it's not a constant stress, but lately there's been stress lately you've had to care give you know your your aging parents lately you've had to help someone move you know all these things that are let your doctor know your medical doctor so even if it, if if it's something emotionally that's bothering you or mentally that's bothering bothering you or you know that you're undergoing a lot of stress let your medical doctor know your general practitioner the one that you see once a year let them know doctor i'm under a lot of stress lately right and they will tell you, okay, maybe we should go get some these screenings. You're, you're not, you're not, you know, you're 19 years old. You're not, you're not really in that group yet. But because you're going through a lot of stress, why don't you just go and get a screening for this or for that, you know? Uh, and 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 your doctor will know the one that you see on a regular basis. And if you aren't seeing a doctor on a regular basis, that's something you really need to think about. Think about going to see somebody. You know, you're like, oh, I'm fine. I don't want, you know, there's so many people like that. I was like that for a long time. I was like that. I'm right. fine. I, I, I'm, I'm okay. But luckily I was around a lot of doctors and they basically just pinned me down and said, okay, you got to take your full panel of tests, this and that. And of course, anyone that's in the, 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 uh, this normal stages of changes in life, you know, you just had a baby, you're about to have a baby. You just, you're, you're reaching the menopause age. You just had menopause, you know, all of these stages, it's time to really maybe put a little bit focus on your health, let your doctor know what's going on with you. And if your doctor says you're fine and you still have this, you know, that instinct is telling you mm, not fine, go get a second opinion, go to another doctor, oh. just talk somebody about it so that you are not trying to figure the, these things out on your own. And of course, although there is a lot of information online and on the internet, it can get confusing. Just if you're curious, look it up and find out, you know, is this something that I should be concerned about? And it will help you get the help that you need, the care right. that you need. True. Uh, about two years ago, before COVID uh, and the pandemic and everything, we were doing group sessions here at my healing center. For those of you who are in the Los Angeles area, we're starting our uh, women's group sessions. And one of the group sessions was coping with menopause. So we're going to start that again. And if you are interested, by all means, let me know, message me, and you can also go to my website and check the group sessions. We are restarting, uh, and it's we can even do something about emotional coping mechanism because one of the things that is truly recognized for cancer patients is the to manage the health related managing and improving your mood so it can be mindfulness we do mindfulness techniques it, it can be relaxation techniques which is relaxation technique is part of the hypnosis guided visualization cognitive therapy as part of it even meditation um, so there is a lot of things that are happening on the app as I said, if you text cancer to 818-221-2797, I'm gifting you an audio recording for cancer, either for you or a loved one. If you know someone, help them relax. Yes. Um, with all this, one thing I didn't know 
is when we are under such duress, especially uh, young adolescents that have their loved ones going through cancer and they can't handle it, especially if it is a grandma or grandpa, and they are so attached to them. Loss of a grandparent is traumatic enough, but when they see them and they can't be with them, and this in itself affects them so much. And through this pandemic, I've had many clients that because they could not be with their loved ones, they were in the hospital and everything, believe it or not, there is twice likely to attempt suicide because they feel I can't deal with this. I can't cope with it without them. I can't cope with the stress. What do you have to say about that, Chris? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, that uh, it's only been really recently that that um, we're paying attention to caregivers and the family members around around cancer patients. And uh, you know, it's they're the the the, the silent sufferers sometimes. You know, you, everybody's so c concentrated and and focused on the sick person that you're forgetting. You know, some of the 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 grandchildren or children or, or brothers and sisters that might be suffering. And uh, that's why it's really important to, to tell your doctor. Um, uh, and even if you, you notice that a friend of yours is having a particularly hard time, especially if there's young people listening and you know that, you know, your, your classmate or someone, at, at, you know, someone in their family is suffering, you know, just let them know that there's, there's help out there for them you know, reach out, your school counselor can put you in touch with, you know, a mental health professional that will help you out. And, and really, it is not, um, it, it's really about letting this person know that they're, they, they won't die from their anxiety. It feels awful. It's yucky. You don't like to feel it, but we can get through it. There's techniques, there's ways to get through it so that you can survive. Because sometimes it's just letting them know, yeah, it feels terrible, but let's get through it. We can breathe through it. There's ways to, to uh, and you know, I, I am a very, very, very big fan of hypnotherapy and the gift of hypnotherapy that um, has been, you know, apparent in my life and all of the stress that I was dealing with. You know, uh, we run multiple companies before my husband retired and and um, I'm still working and I've got, you know, children that I'm raising and uh, recently a parent that I had put, um, uh, you know, help through hospice. So just all of those things all together, you know, if I didn't have mental health support, hypnotherapy on my side, in my court, I think it, I would have had a much harder time. And, uh, you know, definitely feeling a lot healthier because I'm getting not just uh, you know, um, checked out and, and healthy on the physical side, but checked out and healthy on the mental health side as well. So, uh, and, you know, if you are uh, um, seeing someone in distress because of either cancer diagnosis or someone in their family with a cancer, there's lots of little roles you can play. When my, mm -hmm. my father was in hospice and people said, what can I help with? I really had to answer that question you know, um, okay, what can you help with? So, uh, you know, me, I have this, this house that a lot of my relatives come over and I always feel like I have to be the hostess, right? So that's the one thing that stressed me out. And I'm like, why am I stressing about that? So I told my cousin, you be the hostess. I'm going to go take a nap. You, anyone that comes to visit, you're the host. This is your house. You take over for the, you know, four hours that I'm going <laughs> to, whatever, a couple hours that I just need time to myself. So oh my God, you just said something. If only every one of us, especially women who are the doers, right? The caretakers, the doers. You know, we always do this for our children. Mm -hmm. And we say, time out. We forget to give me time to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong of saying, you know what? Um, mom it's my time it's uh mommy time i need my time and it's not for and also it becomes like it's not a punishment when i say you know what go and have a time out 
So mm-hmm. time out is not always a punishment because if you start doing a time out for yourself, it means I am taking this time to regroup, to recoup, to Six. reconnect, and then come and deal with whatever it is that it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, you know, we find ourselves in circumstances that we sometimes can't physically escape the, the circumstance. You know, we have to be here. We have to attend this meeting. We have to go to work. We have to have to. Uh, and so it, it's a matter of how you, you get through that day, that, that hour, you know, breathing technique, you know, mm-hmm. or, or like you said, taking a break, scheduling time to go take a break and not doing things that will kind of worsen your situation, which brings me to the next um, cancer that is uh, brought up in October, liver, liver cancer awareness. Oh, and, anger. Yeah. And, yeah. So in the medical metaphysical sense, you, the liver deals with, with anger, but the liver also has to process alcohol. And so, right. you know, my public service announcement is that you really take a kind of a a look at how much alcohol you're intaking because alcohol and regular use of alcohol is a risk factor for cancer. So, you know, a lot of us don't face that. It's like, oh, I'm not a smoker. I'm fine. But you may be a drinker. And, you know, what what is routine, regular drinking? According to the American Medical Association, it's one drink a day. And one, what does that mean? So it's either a beer or a wine cooler, a 12-ounce beer, that's one. Um, okay. Or a five-ounce glass of wine or a shot. So if you're, if you're doing that on a regular basis, you have a risk fa- factor for cancer. So take a look at that and how much um, alcohol you're consuming. And then take those steps. Is that in United so States? Out. Is that in United States? Because France and Italy, and there's countries that their alcohol either a shot of vodka or their glass of wine is right. part of their daily life. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but, um, you know, usually that is not, um, used for stress that's used, right. That type of consumption, it's a normal traditional way of, of having dinner. But okay. in the United States, unfortunately, that is a gateway. And I, we have to admit that alcohol is an addictive substance so that, you know, the tradition of having wine at dinner can be a gateway to a uh, substance misuse mm. or overuse or addiction. So it is so. the emotional connection to yes, the behavior. Absolutely. There yes. you go. And then it ties back, back to chronic stress. If right. chronic stress is in your life, maybe the traditional wine at out, uh, wine at dinner can become something negative if you're not watching the stress if you're not watching the alcohol intake that can turn into something bad you're and so again right. it makes you it puts you at the risk factor for cancer so just be aware let your doctor know hey you know i used to drink a wine uh, a glass of wine a night and I'm now finding out it's more like two glasses or three glasses let your doctor know and your doctor will tell you Okay, for your age or your, your stage in life, that might be too much. Think about cutting down. Or, hey, you know, that's fine, but cut, maybe cut down on your stress. And, you know. Um, but do all, we have to share that with the doctor? I mean, it's like. It, you should. Think, you should. I think recognizing. Recognizing why we do what. So that's why everything that I do in my method is the way I do my practice is evoke, embrace, evolve, is evoking the underlying cause, the reason we are doing whatever it is we are doing. So if it is over drinking, overeating, over overwhelming, that in itself, drinking socially may be accepted. But when you overdrink, just like you said, two or three, because of boredom, because of anger, because, you know, I yeah. get emotional and I go and reach for the cigarette. I go and reach for this or, you know, I've got nothing else to do. This is the only thing I can put my hand on it. And by golly, this is going to numb what I feel. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, obviously you can't share with your doctor everything that stresses you out in life, but you can say in general, I'm stressed out because of this. A doctor will will absolutely let you know mm-hmm. if you are engaging in risky health behavior 
or if you're fine or if you're not fine. So, you know, share. And then also sharing those bits of information with your general health practitioner allows that practitioner to refer you to support that can be covered by your insurance. Because if you're just... Yeah, and that that's really what it is. Unfortunately, there's the you know um, insurance doesn't cover as much or doesn't pay as much, uh, so sometimes we have to kind of you know seek out alternatives and and uh, in a pay out of pocket. And I'm hoping that uh, you know the United States will recognize the healthcare industry will recognize how important mental health support is and and you know either pay more for it, pay doctors more. To, to take care of patients' uh, mental health and also to, you know, really increase the opportunity for people to get mental health support early in their disease, early in their health journey, rather than wait until it's really, you know, bad. So that's what I'm hoping for, so that there's a, much more of that preventative, you know, I'm getting the support I need so that my chronic stress is cut down so I don't get sick in the first place, rather that's than waiting true. until sickness happens. And then all of a sudden, there's all these health issues to prevent it. You know, the same way as a lot of people go and exercise to take care of their body for the outside, it Mm -hmm. would be lovely if we start doing this preventive mental and emotional care in order, even if it is to talk to someone, go for a walk and have a conversation. And as you said, for the the industry to recognize mental health as it has been. Mm -hmm. It's not as big as it used to be uh, or should be, not used to be. And uh, so, yeah, are other countries more hands-on to taking care of mental and emotional health? I'm not really sure. I know that in uh, in general, uh, the healthcare, from my experience and from my uh, knowledge of what goes on in other countries, that that healthcare does not have um, as much of a, a problem when it comes to the <laughs> to what's paid for. So a, a lot of countries, especially like uh, our neighbors in Canada, the the um, the health of the citizenship is is has a much better coverage. There's not so much financial worry in other Mm -hmm. countries as there is in the United States. You know, if you're not covered by insurance, most states will have Medicaid, which will allow you to to access health, but it's it's not as easy to come by, you know, Uh, and there's still a disparity in the United States, a very big disparity between the haves and have-nots. You have better health insurance, you you get better care. If you have more money, you get better care. So that that's a problem, I think, that uh, un, unfortunate in this country that maybe, you know, places like Italy, France, and uh, Finland, and, and places like that don't have a problem because they don't have that health disparity because of financial issues that this country has. So I'm hoping that that will change also, that we have a little bit more equality and parity when it comes to the care that's needed by the the people of the country. I feel like saying, next time you feel under stress, go to Hawaii. (laughs) (laughs) I know. Uh, Right now, though, uh, Hawaii, unfortunately, (laughs) is experiencing a little bit of an uptick in COVID cases. So they're saying, you you come if you're absolutely necessary. And, you know, and that's because, obviously, their their hospital systems are not as much, they don't have as many hospitals. Right. But I felt like... So. I wasn't thinking of that part. I was thinking about just go to the sand, to the ocean, yeah, let go to your worries, place. just let them go into the water and allow the well, waves to take it away. You know, one thing I do recommend is that people watching this, if you haven't already signed up for um, Lisa's uh, daily email, her daily affirmations, let that, I mean, uh, honestly, let that be the first step. So that every day you look at the email, you open it up, you say the affirmation, you take a couple of deep breaths. I mean, I think that has really cut my stress levels down tremendously. And when I forget, something's missing in my life. I'm like, I didn't say my affirmation today. Better get at that email and open it up and say my affirmation. But taking those, those extra steps to take care of yourself emotionally and mentally really has such lasting and impactful, you know, um, effect on your health. 
And so if we can do that, if that's the, if that's the one piece of information we can share with people today, it's, it's doing that. Give yourself, you know, do, do some self-care so that, you know, you're, you're, you start out on a much more even playing field when it comes to your health. Right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I love that plug. Um, it was very intentional. And when I sent the daily affirmations, never will you see the same affirmation go out twice. And that's because I put my heart and soul in picking uh, the right ones to go out at the right time. And it's, it's with all love. And I think it's because I want each and every one of my viewers to feel the same that I am here for you because you matter to me. That said, thank you so much for showing up, standing up, speaking up with me. And we look forward to doing many, many more um, information on mental health, on cancer health, on women's wellness together. Thank you so much, Chris. And for thank all you. of our audience, thank you for being here. Chris, anything else you would like to say in closing? <laughs> Just thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm very honored. I, I absolutely love you and your affirmations. I depend on them. <laughs> I, I highly recommend them. And then everything that we talked about, all the information, I will send you the link so you can post it on this, uh, on your Facebook page for people to, to get more information. But go out there, talk to your doctor, let them know where you're at so um, they can get screened if you need to be screened. Yes. Just look out for you. Thank you so much. And for all of you, thank you for being a part of the Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Until next week, more coming, more information, more goodness. I bid you goodbye and God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.